now. It could be today. Maybe, hopefully, Lord willing, it could be tomorrow. But the holy day could be is when you get down in your knees at Calvary's cross and look upon the Savior and say, I'm a sinner. I need your blood to wash away my sins. And that's a holy day. My holy day was April 1987 at 773 Broad Street where I knelt received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. I came out of religion. I came out of, now there was no good works in my life before I was saved. I was a rascal. I was in rebellion. I was against God. So there was nothing good I could have done. And there is nothing good that you can do to get into heaven because it was already done by the good one, the Lord Jesus Christ, without sin, without spot. I'm here to tell you a day of thanksgiving is a day when the Lord saved my soul. These things have I written on you that you may know you have earned eternal life. I know today. I know my state at whatever point I close my eyes or the Lord comes for his church. I know where I will be. I will be in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, not because of religion, not because of me, but by the precious blood of God that was shed upon Calvary, and Calvary alone. And you got to be careful, because Paul speaks to the Corinthians, the carnal, the worldly church, and says, there's another Jesus out there. And there are many Jesuses out there in Daytona Beach, Florida, EIA. I'll tell you the other Jesus in Daytona Beach in USA. There's a Jesus you can eat and drink. Now my dictionary says if you eat a man and drink of his blood, you are a carnivore. Carnivores is eating meat. And in another classification in the African tribal nations is carnivore. Cannibal. Eating someone's flesh and drinking their blood does not get you into heaven. It makes you more and more a vile, evil, wicked beast. your friends and your family. Say, hi, I eat a man and I drink his blood and watch how quick, ew, get away from me. And that's exactly what God will do from you. What, what prophet is the flesh? There is no prophet in the flesh. John chapter 6. Now let me tell you about another Jesus in Daytona Beach, Florida, USA. There's a Jesus that's proclaimed that it's not God. And yet they'll come knocking on your door with their little magazines to help proclaim their non-God. I read to you Acts 20:28 20, that says that blood that was shed upon the cross was God's blood. And that blood that was shed upon the cross was Jesus' blood. One in one makes God is Jesus, and Jesus is God. So you got to be careful. With a Jesus who is not God, because a Jesus who is not God, it cannot save you eternally. You might as well show up at heaven's gate with the Lord Jesus Christ and have monopoly money thinking you're going to get into heaven. Because a Jesus who is not God cannot save your soul. Jesus has to be God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto me but by the Father. Now there's another Jesus. There's a Jesus where Mary slept with a man, had carnal relations, and that's completely impossible to Lord Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ had to be born sinless. He had to be of a virgin, with outside no man entering into that proclamation of the birth of Lord Jesus Christ. It had to be of the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, and only by the Holy Spirit that Jesus Christ was conceived in the womb of Mary. Any other ways that Jesus 
to conceive is not God but man. The very fact that the virgin birth proclaims that Jesus is sinless without any sin. That's another Jesus. I'll tell you a more popular Jesus in Daytona Beach, Florida. You got yourself a wrench in your hand, and you got that tight nut, and you put that nut down, you slam your knuckles, and you go, Jesus Christ! That's another Jesus. I know you're not calling upon Jesus for a prayer meeting. Well, why don't you cuss a Santa Claus out? A Buddha! Hey, how about, let's get up to date. Ah, Allah! No. You curse the very name of God. You curse the Lord Jesus Christ, a name that is given to you, not because you wrap your knuckles on a piece of metal, not because you hurt yourself, not because you were hurt, not because you are angry. You have cursed the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, a name that is given to all men, Acts 4.12, that you might be saved by. Ever wonder... It's GD this and GD that, but it's never AD. You never say, Allah, damn it. Because Allah can't do nothing but take off your head. That's all Allah can do by his prophets. Allah wants you to shed blood while Jesus Christ shed his blood for life. And let me tell you, Muslims out there, those virgins you get in your heaven, once they have been used, they're no longer virgins. Uh -huh. The way, the truth, and the life, the only entrance to God the Father proclaim in John 14 is the Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God is when He went to Calvary's cross with your sins and nailed those sins to that cross and shed His blood and went down into hell to deposit your blood waiting for you to call upon Him. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I don't read anything in Acts 16.31 about eating. I don't read anything about taking people's lives in Acts 16.31. I don't see a banner that says MasterCard, Visa, American Express in Acts 16.31. But I do see, I see that name that's above all names, the Lord Jesus Christ, is the name I see in Acts 16.31 for salvation. For by grace are we saved through faith, and not of ourselves, least any man should boast. You see, when we get to glory, when we get to New Jerusalem one day, you ain't going to come up to me and say, Preacher, praise you for preaching in Daytona. It was so great to hear your preaching. No. You ain't going to have that radio or TV or tape. Preacher, oh, wasn't he so great? Wasn't my pastor? No. When you get to New Jerusalem, you're going to worship and praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you don't love the Lord Jesus Christ now, you ain't going to love him in heaven. Because he gets all the honor. He gets all the glory. He gets all the gratification. It's nothing for you. That's why you got to die to yourself upon your knees to receive Christ as your Savior. He is the one that God exalted. I find in the King James 1611 Bible, I find Jesus Christ. I don't see your name in the book. I don't see my name in the book. But I see Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who was virgin born. Who lived 33 and a half years approximately. Who knew the day, the hour, and the way that he was going to die. And not only he just died 
to die like men. So Jesus Christ could not die because he was sinless. The wages of sin is death, which means he had to give himself of death voluntarily as God. Because you can't kill God. He had to give his life for you. For your sins. Because you are going to die, a hundred percent sure. And there's one thing sure in this life, in Daytona Beach in 2015, is you're going to be taxed, and you're going to die. That is sure. And they can't tax you after death unless it's called life insurance. Why isn't it called death insurance? Because after death, the people that write your policy know there's the eternal life out there. And we call it an act of God. You're surrounded by the Bible. You're surrounded by God. You can't get rid of Him. And even if you got rid of Him, how are you going to get rid of God? You'll stand before God one day and the Bible says, Prepare to meet thy God. Oh, I don't believe in God. That's okay. You're going to meet him one day. And he's thy God. He ain't a big rock in outer space. He ain't the big bang. That comes later. The Bible says, even if you don't believe, although you don't want to listen, you don't want to obey, prepare to meet thy God. In the book of Amos. I'm not talking about Andy. I'm talking about the prophet Amos said, you're going to meet your God one day. And you better meet God on one term, the Lord Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. You come to Jesus Christ with anything else, you ain't going to heaven, you're going straight to the lake of fire to burn for all eternity. The Bible proclaims one way, one truth, and one life. And that is met, and that is fitted in the Lord Jesus Christ of the Bible. I'll tell you what happens when you continue to live your life without receiving the Lord Jesus Christ. When you refuse to do what God has told you to do. When you refuse Acts 16.31, I will tell you what will happen to you. You will be judged by that God that you rejected. And that God will proclaim to you one moment of time, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. But Lord, didn't I eat you? Didn't I drink you? I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. But Lord, didn't I sell magazines? Lord, didn't I pass out pamphlets? Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. But Lord, didn't I go to church? Didn't I tithe? Didn't I give money? Didn't I feed the poor? Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Now, what would happen if I would take your advice, preacher, and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior? Enter down to the joy of the Lord. That's a big difference from depart from me. Well done, thou good and faithful sir. That is a far cry from God telling you to go to hell. Which is another curse that men curse. By telling you to go to hell, you don't want God to tell you to go to hell. And many, the Bible says, that take the broad way, many people will hear from the lips of God, the last voice proclaimed by God is, Go to hell. And you're not going to laugh that one off. I know, I said that mean, nasty word, hell. Oh, even Christians hate that word. But it's a word in the Bible that Jesus spoke about. The one that created it, he said that hell was created for Satan and his angels and any man who disbelieves, who does not do what the Bible says to do with the Lord Jesus Christ, will be cast into the lake of fire with Satan and his angels for all eternity. And I'm speaking about hell to get you out. And the only way to come out 
blood of hell is by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, I preach the negative, but I treat the positive. I can mention hell, 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 and get people angry with me. Oh, well. But I'm also going to preach Jesus' blood, Jesus' blood, Jesus' blood, and still get people mad at me, so I can't win no matter what. So I'm just going to preach the truth. Hell is for people who have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Hell is because you have rebelled of what God has said. Well, how am I going to know what God has said? I'm glad you asked that question. Let's go to Romans chapter 10. Let's see what the Bible says. Not what I say. Who cares what I say? You don't even know my name, but you ought to know the Lord Jesus Christ's name. Romans 10. Why do we stand here upon the streets to aggravate your commerce? To aggravate your covetousness? To aggravate the people coming back and forth? I've got a reason out of the Bible why we stand here. Go eat all the world and preach the gospel. That's why we're here. And Romans chapter 10 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's what the Bible said. It doesn't say Pope. It doesn't say preacher. It doesn't say mama. It says whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That name is the Lord Jesus Christ. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? Uh-oh. How shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent, as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, and bring glad tidings of good things. God is joyful at the preaching of His Son this Saturday morning late. God is well pleased that His name is exalted to all the crowds of unbelievers that you may come out and believe on His Son. God has said, Go to the Daytona Farmer's Market and preach my Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that they may be saved or they may be condemned. Now we're not done with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ upon Calvary's cross. They buried him in a tomb. It wasn't even his tomb. But Christ already knew what was going to happen. So he lied dead as a doorknob on the beautiful Daytona Beach. The great beach. He lied dead like a rock. The rock. Dead in the tomb. Fulfilling the scriptures. And all the world, but 11 men and a bunch of women, cheered. Jesus Christ is dead. He's buried. He's gone. He's out of our life. Such as you'll probably treat me one day when I drop dead, and I won't be here. That preacher's gone. Good. That's what they said about Jesus. So he died. And they buried him. So what? There are religious figures that have died and been buried all over the world. Graveyards have pastors, priests, religious figures, great men, historical men in their graveyard. So what? So is Jesus. But on the third, which rules out that Jesus died on Friday. You can't get three days and three nights for Friday to Sunday morning unless you are in college or you've got the new mathematics authored by the President of the United States, Common Core. That's the only way you get three days and three nights from Friday. By the way, why would it be Good Friday if Jesus Christ was crucified upon the cross? What makes that good? So, he's lying in the tomb. Then, the women come. And the custom is, you, you take the dead body, you wrap it in spices and do that 
and all that. That's the Jewish custom. That's not what we're talking about. We got something specific we're talking about today. They come to the tomb. They're on their way. And one of them gets the question, well, how are we going to roll that big stone? He's got Roman soldiers outside of it. There's this big, huge rock in front of this tomb. Mary, let me see your muscles. Hey, you ain't going to do it. Elizabeth, let me see you. Hey, you ain't going to do it. You're older than the hill. So we can't release religion onto us. It's too heavy. And religion is guarded by Roman soldiers. We're going to take a pilgrimage to the dead Jesus. Allah does it. Most of your Eastern religion have pilgrimages. But see, this pilgrimage, when they came to the tomb of Jesus, the rock was down. The soldiers were gone. And they walked into that place where the body was, and there was no body to be found. You want to try that with the Pope? You want to try that with Joe Smith? You want to try that with Brigham Young? Russell? Mary Baker Eddy? She's still got the telephone call, but she has the telephone, but she's called nobody. Somebody cut her service off. They come to the tomb of Jesus, and it's empty. And the angels, two of them, as the Old Testament says of that Ark of the Tabernacle that Indiana Jones is never going to find, because it's in heaven, the angels proclaim about the Lord Jesus Christ the headline of all headlines. He is not here. He is risen. That's what makes Jesus Christ different from anybody else. Not only did He die, not only was He buried in the tomb according to the Scriptures, but He arose from the grave the third day, after three days and three nights, now get this, according to the Scriptures. If you were to read the Old Testament, Jesus, the apostles, and the angels proclaim that in the Old Testament there are prophecies about the Lord Jesus Christ fulfilled 100% to seal your name in His book, in His blood, to have your name put in the Lamb's book of life according to the Lord Jesus Christ that He died like all men died. He was buried like all men are buried and arose again according to the Scriptures which no man can do. That God has said there is no other name I'm part quoting there is no other name under heaven, given amongst men, whereby ye must be saved. Acts 4.12 Where it's also recorded by the Apostle Paul, after being asked, what must I do to be saved? The Apostle Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Your terminal diseases, the wages of sin, is death. But, the gift of God's eternal life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And upon salvation... God has told me to come to you through the scriptures, Mark 16, go in all the world and preach. Jesus Christ has died, he's buried, and he arose again the third day. That is the
the gospel. That is the good news that Romans chapter 10 says we're to bring to you. We're not here to bring men's philosophies. We're not here to bring you magazines. We're not here to bring you good deeds. We're not here to bring you religion. We're here to bring you Jesus Christ. I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am not ashamed to raise up my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. I am not ashamed of the Bible. Because it is the power of salvation for me to call upon Him. It's the power of salvation for you to call upon Him. Jesus said, ye must be born again. Anybody who has been born of a woman needs the salvation sent by God, the Lord Jesus Christ.